Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. It is Injoma here and in today's video we're going to learn how to make this beautiful trendy dress. This dress actually took me time when I say time. I didn't really enjoy making this dress but at the end of the day it came out fine and beautiful. So for this dress you are going to be needing 4 yards of fabric if you want to be on the safer side buy four yards of fabric four yards should be very enough for it for the skirt it has an overlap then for the top we have some draping there though i did my draping on my table and we are going to be doing freehand cutting for this tutorial we are not going to be doing pattern drafting and i hope that you guys will learn i want to try freehand cutting we have been doing a lot of um, pattern pattern drafting on my channel i want to try freehand cutting it's been a long time now the first thing that i'll be cutting out is my skirt part i'll be cutting the front part of this skirt first i will cut one piece of the front and you know that it is an overlap right it has an overlap shape at the front i'll go ahead and cut out one piece of the skirt first then i'll place my half length i will mark out my hip line that is from my shoulder to hip i'll mark the full length my full length is 35 inches plus two inches for the hemming two inches is for hemming allowance now after doing this i'll mark my lines and i'll take my measurements i'm sorry i didn't know that my camera was not recording at this point so i found out late but then just cut out your normal skirt that is all you need for now then after cutting out the front part of this skirt you are going to cut out the back part of the skirt using this front you cut the back the only difference between the front and the back is a normal zipper allowance so you are going to add just 1.5 inch for your zipper allowance or you can just use one inch that is if you are not turning this dress with a lining after placing this front piece at the on the fabric that i folded for the back i'll go ahead and cut out my back part and i'll open my zipper allowance then after cutting this back part the next thing that you're going to do is that you will cut out another front pattern like another front skirt like we are doing freehand cutting we're not doing pattern drafting so we are going to cut out another front so after cutting out the second front piece we are going to cut out the overlap shape of the skirt now i am folding a fabric for the second front skirt the front skirt is two i'm done cutting the first one so using the first one i will cut out another one so after cutting out this we can now take our overlap shape so i'm actually doing this because we are doing we are sewing a short gown so it will not consume so much fabric that's why i am doing this freehand cutting but if you are doing a long skirt you should use um fat patterns because pattern will save you a lot of fabric now i am done the next thing that i'll do is to notch the center front of the two of them the two skirt pieces i'll notch the center front so that when i'm placing my overlap two of them will meet at the center i hope you understand what i mean by that so now i'll open up the skirt pieces this is the front one this is the first one then what i'm going to do is that i will make my first slant you know this gown has um, an overlap shape and the overlap is asymmetric like one side of the skirt is larger than one side of the skirt now from the center i will go in by three inches i'm trying to cut out the smaller part of this skirt and this one will be on top then from that place where i went to the left you know the slit of this skirt is very close to the left hand side so from the center front you will go towards the left by three inches you go in towards the left by three inches then from there you will slant this line to the center of this skirt you can see my first slant this is the first piece of this skirt and this particular one that i did now will be on top so i realized that um the slit is a kind of wide i had to reduce it a bit you can see that i did not cut on that line exactly now this is for one side of the skirt i will place the other front piece you can see two of them have the same shape and the center notch is there i'll place the one that will be on top on top of this skirt and now we can 
identify or we can decide how open or how close we want our slits to be now what i'm going to do is that in order to make this skirt to be fitted i will extend this particular one i'll start cutting this particular one from the in line you can the other one started from three inches right but for this particular slit i want it to start from the joining of this skirt so that if you wear it on your body it should be very relaxed your overlap will not be opening too much now i have marked how wide i want it to be from this place where i marked this dot i'll go ahead and connect my line to that place where i marked how open i want my overlap to be so for me if you are cutting this you can make your own opening to be very close to the center line so that when you are working it will not be opening too much then if you want you can also tack it down a bit you can just tack it down a bit now i'm going to slant and after slanting this one i'll place the two of them together now we can have a clear view of how our skirt is going to look though the skirt we have in the thumbnail it has pleats on one side but i don't have enough fabric that's why i said you should buy four yards if you are sewing your own i don't have enough fabric that's why i just made my own overlap plain but if you want to pleat one side of your overlap you can just go ahead and pleat the side that you want to pleat now we are done with the skirt part the next thing that we are going to do is to cut out the top this top is really important i am done folding the fabric that i'll be using for the front and we know that the front has an overlap as well the front has an overlap so what we are going to do now is that from the center of this front we will come in by four inches first we will leave four inches space for the overlap then you mark your center line there then from that center line you can now take the rest of the measurement this is freehand so we are going to be taking all our measurements on the fabric now i am going to place my tape rule from the beginning of this fabric so before we do that we are going to come in by four inches you can make your overlap five inches it is up to you but i made mine four inches from that four inches line i'll mark my center line so this line that i am marking now is my center line it is my center line technically so from this center line you will start taking the rest of the measurements now i will take my bust points measurements that is 10 inches i'll mark my 10 inches I'll mark my half length. My half length is 16 inches. I'll mark my chest line and I'll add 2 inches seam allowance for my top. Now I am done connecting the lines. And from the center line, I'll also mark my shoulder. My shoulder is 15 inches, that is 7.5 plus half an inch seam allowance, that is 8. And I'll connect my armhole. After connecting my armhole, I will go ahead and measure my neck width. The width of my neck is 3 inches. And remember, these 3 inches will start from that center line that I marked. Then I will start my, um, my shoulder slant from there. Then extend this 4-4 four, four inches line. The next thing that we are going to do is that from that neck width, I am going to mark a V-shape, a triangular shape, from my neck width down to my half length. And this is our V neck. So if you cut this open, you will get that your overlap shape. And please, when cutting, remember to match the center front. It is very important. Now you will take your bust measurement divided by four plus one inch seam allowance, your waist divided by four plus one inch seam allowance. And remember that your measurement to always start from that center line so that you not make mistake with your measurements. Now I am cutting. I'll cut off the neckline, I'll open the center fronts, I'll cut my shoulder slants, my armhole, and I will cut out the remaining part of the upper part. So after cutting out this um, top, this particular front piece, we are going to notch our center, that center line. Do not forget to notch your center line. Just go ahead and slant your shoulder, cut off your shoulder slant, and notch your center line. This will be very helpful for you so that when you are placing the overlap, you will know where two of them will meet. Now, if I open this up, you can see the shape I have. Now, you can do your draping on top. That dress is mostly draping. You will drape it. But if you don't want to drape, you can do your slash and spread. Like you can cut off everything on your pattern. 
it will slash and spread that is for the front for the back this is the piece that i'm using for my back i am done folding and for the back you will come in by one inch or 1.5 for your zipper allowance you know that your back will have a zipper allowance right so these areas you are marking these lines will serve as my zipper allowance so after marking this zipper allowance i'll go ahead and extend the lines now all my measurements will start from this zipper line like if you are taking your back measurements all of them will be at the zipper line i know a lot of people will be asking me why i did not add any that to this top i don't want to add a that to my number one i am slim i am not too busty number two the fabric that i'm using is a kind of stretchy so if you are making this for someone who is busty you should add your that and later you will drape the gathers on a body form you will drape the gathers or a body form or you can use the slash and spread method i hope you understand better now so this is the reason why i did not add that to my own but for this one i'm going to be doing the draping on the table so that the people that do not have a dress form can catch up now take my armhole line you can see my neckline my neckline is three inches and it is very deep i made it 10 inches my neckline is very deep at the back it has a v neckline at the back so i made the width of the neckline three inches and i made the depth of the neckline nine or ten inches should be very enough for you now i'll go ahead and mark my shoulder my armhole curve my shoulder slant and i'll start taking my back measurements so you divide your bust by four and then add one inch and remember to start your measurements from the center line now we are going to cut out so after cutting out you can see what i have at the back you can see where my neckline stopped and where my zipper allowance started from my zipper allowance is very low now the next thing that we are going to do is to cut out our sleeve you know that our sleeve is uh, a puffy sleeve now a guy got sleeve so now you will cut out this sleeve and remember the sleeve has a band it has a band or a cuff then from here i will measure 22 inches remember our sleeve has a band so you take out 20 we will take out four inches for that band or five inches then you take the rest of the measurements on your sleeve sleeve measurement is 27 inches right so i want my band to be five inches i want it to be very defined that is five inches so what i'm going to do is that i will take out five inches from 27 and that will be 22 that's why i marked 22 inches plus one inch seam allowance on this sleeve and the sleeve will be very it will be wide because you are still going to gather it on the band and you also gather it around the armhole area now i'll go ahead and cut out the curve of the sleeve now if i open up this sleeve you can see what i have there you can see that it is wide enough though i am managing my fabric i'm telling you guys that managing four years is just the best if you are sewing this outfit now this one is for the band i'll go ahead and fold into two before folding again remember your band should be on fold so that it will look very neat my band is five inches i'll add half an inch that is five and half this is the height of the band now we are going to take our round sleeve measurements our round sleeve is four inches plus half an inch seam allowance that is four and a half and i'll go ahead and cut out the band you can see the two of them and they are all on fold now the next thing that we are going to do is to start our drape now this is the fabric that i'll be using for the drape first thing i'm going to do is that i will measure out let's say a 19 inches you know a half length your half length may be 16 add extra four inches or five inches before you cut out the fabric that we use for the draping this will save you a lot it will make the fabric that you use for your draping enough for you so my half length is 16 inches i cut out 19 inches fabric the height the length of the fabric is 19 inches so that after doing my pleats the, my fabric will not reduce now this is how i'm going to pleat this thing i'll pleat this fabric like this and make sure that your pleats are very deep these are for the this method is for people that do not have a dress form make sure that your pleats are very deep and after pleating you go ahead and pin down 
after pinning down you iron it then you fix it on top of your front bodies you understand now i am taking my time and i will go ahead and pleat this very well Now, after pleating, we are going to place it on top of our overlap. You can see that this 19 inches that I cut out is not even enough. So, place it in a triangular manner. You, you can notice that we have a V neckline, right? So, place it in a V shape, in a triangular manner, so that the plates will look like this on your fabric you get so now this is the um pleats and this is how it looks from the back so after running your stitch round this neckline you can now go ahead and cut off the unwanted part now this is the second piece for the other side of the top i am going to cut out like 19 inches or 20 inches and after doing that i will start pleating again and make sure that your pleats are deep then secure with your pins this is very important you can even use a hemming gum to hold them down or you can do hand tacking to hold your pleats down so that they will not scatter now after pinning them down i'll also place them on i'll place it on the other side of the front piece you can see how it looks and i'll place it in a v manner you can see that this particular fabric that i cut out is very enough it's covered the whole fabric now some of you will be asking how we are going to turn the neckline right we are going to use our main fabric as the lining we are going to use the main fabric the front piece to serve as the lining so after placing this on your fabric this way I'm trying to re re repleat the other one. It is too much. So I'm trying to like reduce the pleats a bit. So if you notice that it's consumed a lot of fabric, you can just go ahead and reduce your pleats. Now I am done reducing my pleats and this is what we have. The next thing that we are going to do is to iron this. And now we are done ironing. This is our main fabric, right? So now you will use this main fabric to turn these pleats that you have made. You can see how I placed it. Now, these pleats will be under. You can see it is under and I kept the main fabric on top. Now, just go ahead and run a stitch at your neckline, then top stitch. After top stitching, you will fold over and you will notice that your neck is very neat. So, this is the seam allowance and this is the neckline. So, now I will fold it and the main fabric will now be under this pleat and you can see the neckline area the neckline is very neat now you are going to run a stitch around the remaining parts of the top and after running that stitch you can now cut off the excess you can see what i have here i'm done running a stitch around all the parts of the top this is to hold down in order to hold down those pleats that i made even at the shoulder i held it down with a pleat for the people that do not have a dress form this will be easy for you you can do your slash and spread before you cut out your fabric now i am trimming off the excess that i have in order to go back to the first shape of the front and now you can see what we have our triangular shape is there our pleat is there so now i'll also repeat the same thing on the other side of the fabric what i'm going to do is that i will place the main fabric that overlap neckline that we cut out before i'll place it on top of this pleat then i'll run a stitch on the neckline after running that stitch you will top stitch then you will fold it over so if you fold it over automatically it should be at the under of this it should be under this pleats that we have made now i'll remove my pins and i'm done running a stitch around it i will go ahead and trim off the excess that we don't need so guys if you are doing this please remember to iron but do not iron your pleats too much so that they will not be too flat and remember to fix your dart your dart is really important so this is where we are going to stop for today this video is too long i had to divide it into two so that i will not get bored 
the next video that i'll post tomorrow will start from the neckline the back neckline we are going to do the draping for the back so guys do not forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so that anytime i upload a new video you will be notified i want to also remind you guys that we have a fashion school in enugu in case if you want to learn how to sew if you want to enroll for our physical classes you can just drop a comment in the comment section also if you want to register for our online classes our online classes are also available we have the blazer corset shirt trouser and jumpsuits you can just drop a comment in the comment section and i'll tell you how you can pay for the registration so thank you guys so much for watching and please don't forget to subscribe click on the notification bell notification bell is very important so that if i upload the sewing video of this tutorial you will be notified thank you all and see you in my next video Bye.